In this lecture, we're going to start talking about rotation. So before we begin, let's go do a sequence of basically what we did for 1D motion already. So 1D and 2D linear motion. We have kinematics. Start with kinematics. Right? And then, so this is basically stuff like A vector, V, R. And of course, we have these equations of motion R plus V0, T plus 1 half AT squared for constant acceleration. And V is equal to V0 plus A vector times T, right? And of course, basically, we have that simplified version of it, which is useful on occasion. V squared minus V0 squared is equal to 2A delta X. Okay. So we started kinematics, and now we then moved on to... Newton's law, right? So second law, actually. This is uh, F net is equal to the mass times acceleration. And then finally, you could solve a lot of things using that, but then finally move on to conservation law. Okay, so we have energy conservation. This is uh, E mechanical is equal to kinetic energy plus potential energy, which is typically equal to one half mv squared plus some potential energy, which is uh, the term for what you want to talk about, like spring or gravity. And then we also have momentum. Okay, so uh, let's write down momentum. This is going to be P1 initial vector plus P2 initial vector is equal to P1 final vector plus P2 final vector. Okay, so we're going to do basically the same thing for rotation. So we will do this for rotation. And I'm going to leave a big blank space right here, all right? Uh, and we're going to come back to it and we'll write down what it is for rotation. But you could guess what it is. It's going to be something related to kinematics. Something related to Newton's laws. And then something related to conservation. Okay, all right, so let's leave some space. I will uh, get back to this thing uh, as we go on. All right. So first thing we should do, I'll leave this in a tidy spot right here. Uh, first thing we should do, we should basically just define what rotation is at some level, right? So let's imagine that you have some object here, some mass, let's give an origin about which something is rotating, say. And let's draw this vector here. This is R, no, not vector, just distance. And let's draw relative to some angle theta here, right? So it's rotating around about some axis here, for instance, right? And um, it's going to be moving along a path S, and of course, basically, this path has an infinitesimal distance ds, right? Okay, so this distance here, ds, is going to be equal to r d theta, right? So this corresponds to some d theta as well. And so the distance s that you travel along the arc is just r and d theta. Okay. Okay. So d theta then. So theta is the angular displacement. Okay. Just as basically r here, which is the position, is also the displacement. 
Right, so you can think of angular displacement or angular position. Right. So, and what's interesting about this is that um, uh, it's the same for all masses period here, okay, that rotate rigidly. So basically the distance between these things are essentially the same. So for instance, I have a pencil, all right, I can rotate this thing rigidly around my origin here. This entire, every point along this thing has the same angular displacement. Right. Okay, so if that's the displacement, then we take the time derivative of it, is define omega as equal to d theta dt. So this is time. This is time derivative of that. This is is the angular velocity, right? Just like dr dt is equal to v. So dr dt, which is the derivative of time respect to displacement or the position, is the velocity. In this case, the derivative with respect to the angle of the space, and the angle of the certain is the angular velocity. So you could just imagine what everything is. It's just that everything is the same as before, except it has the word angular in front of it. Okay? Okay? So that's the second one. All right, so now let's define alpha is equal to d omega dt, which is d squared theta dt squared is the, well, I'm taking the derivative of the angular velocity, guess what that is? That's the angular acceleration. Right? Okay? And so, basically, what we have is theta goes to r, right? Uh, omega goes to v, and alpha goes to a, right? So this is the angular part, that's the position part. Okay. Now, suppose alpha is constant. All right. Then what we have is um, omega is equal to the integral of alpha dt. This is just going to be equal to omega 0 plus alpha t. Right? You can imagine this is basically the same as v is equal to v0 plus a times t. Now similarly, theta is going to be equal to omega dt. That's going to be equal to theta 0 plus omega 0 t plus now d by dt integrate of alpha t is 1 half alpha t squared, right? That is going to be the same as r vector is equal to r0 plus v0 t plus 1 half a t squared. Okay. All right, and so finally, you also can probably write this down, omega squared minus omega zero squared is equal to two alpha delta theta, right? So literally, this is identification. You can always replace that with that. So let's go back here. So the kinematic part is we're left with alpha, whoops, moving all vector, uh, omega and theta. And then theta is equal to theta 0 plus omega 0 t plus 1 half alpha t squared. Omega is equal to omega 0 plus alpha t. And finally we have um, omega squared minus omega 0 squared is equal to 2 alpha delta theta. Alright, so this thing matches exactly with that. Alright, so that's the first piece of it. Okay. Now, um, let's talk a little about the tangential uh, velocity. So this thing here, we can, uh, the tangential velocity, that's literally how fast this thing's moving. This is actually literally ds dt. Okay. And so, this ds dt is going to be equal to dr theta dt, which is going to be equal to, r is constant, r d theta dt is equal to r omega. Okay? 
and then the radio acceleration Remember, this is moving in a circle, right? So this is going to be, the radio acceleration is going to be minus AC, the centripetal acceleration, which is minus B tangential squared over um, R, okay? which in this case is basically, you see, but this is uh, called V tangential, right? So this is literally going to be basically minus R omega squared, right? Okay, so that's beautiful. All right. Now, let me consider let's consider a bunch of particles rotating rigidly. Okay, so what we have is just imagine that we have a stick. I'm going to rotate around here. I'll basically put a bunch of masses here. All right, that's enough. Okay, and so the velocity of this thing increases as I go toward the edge, right? And I want to compute the kinetic energy of this thing. So kinetic energy is the sum over I, which is particles. 1 half mi vi squared. So i is all particles. So that's going to be equal to, these are all our i's, right? So, and all rotating with some constant angular velocity, omega. So this can be equal to sum on i, 1 half mi ri squared omega squared, right? So omega is constant, right, for all of them. So we write this one as one half omega squared, so omega can be brought out, sum on i, mi ri squared, okay? So this thing here just depends on the particles. So this, this defines the moment of inertia, which I'll call I, all right? And so what this gives you is that kinetic energy is equal to one half I omega squared, okay? All right, so if you think about basically how this works for a kinetic energy for regular particles, this is a one half and V squared, right? So you can see the analogy. There is V becomes omega, M becomes I, okay? So basically I serves as the equivalent of essentially something like a mass, right? When you talk about rotation. Okay, so let's talk about how we calculate this moment inertia. Let's consider discrete particles first. All right, so basically that's just like things are just together. Let me imagine for instance that I have an axis here. I'm gonna spin this around, all right? And I'm gonna basically put a few things in various locations. So I'm gonna put basically mass number um, one here and then Mass number two there, okay? This distance will be uh, uh, one. This distance here will be three, okay? And I put another mass here, this is number three. I'll put this distance to be two. And then this mass number four here, this distance shall be four, okay? All right, and it's all spinning around. So I, in this case, you can see, is literally a sum over all particles. Of M I R I squared. So this R is very special. This is the distance from the axis.
of rotation. Okay, so it's not like some distance r to this point. It's actually literally this is the axis, so this is the perpendicular distance to that axis. So let's go sum this up. Let's imagine these are all equal masses. This is m and m and m and another m. So four m's, right? So this be m times the first distance. I say is one squared plus m. The second distance is three squared plus m. The third distance was two squared plus m. The fourth distance was four squared. Okay, and so this can be equal to m times 1 plus 9, right, 3 squared plus 2 squared is 4 plus 16, right? And so, um, and let's make these things equal to 2 kilograms each. So this thing ultimately is, uh, let's see, what is this? Um, 1 plus, uh, that's, uh, sorry, so 1 plus 9 is 10. 4 plus 16 is 20, 20 plus 10 is 30, so 30 times m is 2 is 60, now let's get the units right, it's kilograms, meter squared, right, because it's kilogram here, meter squared there, okay. All right, so that's pretty simple for discrete particles, right, that's not where we're going to make our money, right, where we're going to make our money is basically for continuous objects. Okay, so let's go consider a, a ruler here. So each of these is a um, something dm, right? And so when you want to consider it for continuous objects, you're going from m i r i squared. This will go to converse the integral r squared dm, right? Where this again is the distance from the axis. Okay, really critical you get that, right? Okay, so let's suppose that this is an object here, a ruler, say. This has a length L, right, and a mass, total mass M. Okay, so if I basically pick the x-axis this way, then I can write that dm is equal to the mass over the length times dx, right? Okay. So let's write this thing down. This is just going to be, I'm going to pick the axis to be here. That's my axis. So R is this way. And so this is I is equal to integral of R squared dm. Okay, this integral of, now, let's see. So this was R is x, so that's x squared. Okay. dm is m over L dx. And this is integrated from 0 to L. Alright? Okay? Now, we can do this thing pretty simply. This is M over L integral of x squared dx from 0 to L. If you do this integral right here, this is M over L L cubed over 3. And so this is 1 half, 1 third M L squared. Okay? Now, that's one possibility. The other possibility, you could basically do it from the center. Okay, so if this is the axis here, let's say you're doing it from the center, then I from the center is going to be equal to R squared dm. Now this now here is R. So this stays the same as before, right? But go from minus x, minus L over 2 to plus L over 2. So it's basically going to be going from minus L over 2 to L over 2, x squared m over L dx. So this is the same as before, right? Uh, m over L, 
x cubed over 3 is evaluated between minus l over 2 to l over 2, right? And so in this case, basically, when you take this into account, right, this just becomes a um, l cubed over 8 plus l cubed over 8. And one third of that is, l, is basically 2 l cubed over 24. That is 1 12 m l squared. Right? So that has a natural in, uh, imp interpretation. So if you basically are swinging something from the end, that takes a little bit more work than swinging it from the center. Right? Then that's really literally what that means. This, this thing has a certain length, has a certain mass, right? But the thing is the resistance or the inertia to spinning it from the center versus spinning it from the side is vastly different. Okay, okay. so that is for continuous objects. And so you can imagine that it gets hairier as we go on. So let's do some more examples of basically um, moment inertia. So let's try a solid disk first. Okay. So let's imagine you have a disk. All right. Well, let's see. Um, what do we do with solid disk first? Okay. Uh, so I gonna rotate around the center. I is equal to integral r squared dm, right? That's always what is it or equal to. So this thing has a, a certain mass per unit area. So it has a certain mass, and the area of the solid disk is pi r squared. Okay. Okay, so basically dm is equal to uh, you can imagine m sorry. Um, uh, m over a dA, right? You can imagine there's some certain area like this, right there, okay? And we gotta find what dA is. Well, dA, well, we can imagine this is just basically has some distance from there. So that's be um, r dR, right? So that's some dR, and that has some d theta, right? Some width across this entire thing, right? Okay, so that's going to be equal to, I'm going to call this thing here m over a sigma, the surface mass density. Okay, so it's basically the integral of r squared sigma dA, which we can just work out now. This is going to be integral of um, sigma uh, uh, r squared r dr d theta, okay? So let's do the integral. So one integral basically will spin around this thing. This is from zero to two pi, that's the d theta part. And this dr part, it goes from basically the center r equals zero to, let's imagine this thing has a radius r, r equals r, okay? So let's work this thing out. So it's gonna be basically the um, integral sigma zero to r, R cubed, R squared times R is R cubed, dr, integral 0 to 2 pi, d theta, right? So there's no dependence on theta here, so that just becomes 2 pi uh, right there. That's 2 pi, okay? Um, we'll call this basically m over pi r squared, right? That's just sigma. And now this part here is R cubed dr. That would be basically r to the fourth over four evaluated from zero to r. Okay? So let's basically evaluate this all this stuff out. That becomes a two, right? So this becomes m r to the fourth over r squared over the two. Okay? So this becomes a two. That kills that off. One half m r squared. Okay. So that is basically for uh, a disk.
right? Okay, so that's one, right? Now let's try another one, which is a cylinder. So let's draw like this thing. This has a certain radius r, a certain length l, all right? And I'm going to spin it through the axis through the center. That, that's my axis, all right? So i, again, is just integral of r squared gm, always that, right? So that's going to be equal to the density rho, the mass divided by the volume. Okay, so this thing has a certain mass m, right? is the volume, right? Um, R squared dB, right? So dm is equal to rho dB, okay? So now we just got to figure out what that needs to look like, right? So the volume is just basically rho times the area times the length. I'll call this dx. Right? So call this x in this direction here, all right? And in that case, that's just going to be rho times um, r dr, okay, um, d theta dx, all right? So we can go ahead and do all that. Let's plug everything in now. So integral, all right? Now, fortunately, this r here is the same as this r here, which is the axis distance from the axis, all right? So that's why I picked it that way. Otherwise, it gets much hairier. Okay, so let's go ahead and be very, very careful here. So let's just count the number of R. So it's basically rho. That's an R cube, I believe, right? That's a dr, okay? This will go from zero to capital R, right? And then I have a zero to two pi. That's the d theta part, beautiful. And then I have this um, dx part. This will be zero to L dx, right? Now the volume of a sphere is just basically um, pi, or, no, volume of a cylinder, pi r squared times L, right? So this will be important later on in a second, right? Okay, so I now is equal to, let's just work this thing out. This thing will just give me an L there. This thing will give me a 2 pi. And this thing right here will give me a rho r to the fourth over Four evaluate between zero and r. All right. So let's plug everything in now. This is a l, a two pi. Rho is m over v pi r squared l. Right. And this last piece is going to be a um, r to the fourth over four. All right. So let's go and start sorting everything out. All right. That again, is going to be one half m r squared, All right? I mean, it's not surprising if you took this entire thing and you squeezed it to a disc. It's the same as rotating that disc. Okay. All right. So that's basically two things. All right. Um, let's go on to the next one. I'm actually going to start a new page because it is a little complicated. We're going to do the spherical shell. All right, so this is a spherical shell. It has a mass only on the air surface of the sphere. And we'll rotate the axis like this now, okay? So now let's be very careful. I is equal to integral of R squared dm, okay? And I'm going to be very careful here, all right? I'm actually going to write this ra, basically r from the axis. So this is ra, and you can see this is different than this thing right here, which is, I say, capital R, okay? So we got to be really careful about this now, okay? All right. Okay, so that's ra, all right? And these, these ra's are different from each other, right? Depending on where you are, okay? That's also ra as well. Okay, so 
this thing right here, right, as you can imagine, if I define, let's say, theta along this sphere, right, then what happens is that this here is RA. RA is in fact going to be capital R sine theta, okay? That's going to be crucial in just a second. So this is equal to integral r squared sine uh, squared theta, right? Because it's r a squared, okay? Uh, times dm now, okay? So what's dm? So dm is sigma, which is the mass over the area, right? Times basically dA, all right? Okay, and so the area of a sphere is 4 pi capital R squared, right? Okay, and now the area on the surface of the sphere, which is this area right here, that's going to be equal to sigma, oh sorry, um, it's going to be equal to R squared sine theta d theta d phi, okay? So d phi is the rotation around this way, d theta is basically this angle right there, all right? Okay, looks a little complicated, and that's because it kind of is, but that's just life. Okay, so now we have everything we need, all right? Let's go ahead and plug everything in. So it's going to be equal to, there's an r squared here, a sine theta there, all right? Um, sine squared theta there, okay? This is an m over 4 pi capital R squared, and dA, sorry, is R squared sine theta d theta d phi, okay? So let's basically do the integrals at various points, all right? So this is d phi. This is going to be, um, sorry, there's no extra place there. d phi is going to 0 to 2 pi, goes all the way around. D theta goes from 0 to pi. Okay, so that's the tricky part which uh, one has to keep in mind. All right, and so what we are left with is going to be, let's write this thing down now, okay? So this will kill that off, all right? Um, 1 over 4 pi and m r squared, okay? Um, let's see, there's a sine theta, a sine theta there, right? So I'm going to write that as, um, let me think about this, uh, I'll write it like this, 0 to pi, I'll write it as a sine squared theta, a sine theta. I'm not writing a sine cube, you'll see why in just a second. d theta, and now this one's actually not too bad. This is just going to be 0 to 2 pi of d phi, that's just 2 pi. Right? So this will kill that off, make it a 2 there. All right? Okay, so now we're going to work on this part. Right? So to do that, I have a trick. Here's a trick. I'll rewrite this as 1 minus cosine squared theta. All right? Okay? And so this just becomes 1 half mr squared. Um, You see, this one is going to be uh, integral sine theta minus cosine squared theta sine theta d theta from 0 to pi, right? Okay, so this part is not so hard to do. This part here is going to be equal to 1 half mr squared. That's going to be minus cosine theta evaluated at 0 to pi minus now have to do a trick here. A trick here is we'll just see in a second is that basically let um, uh, x equals cosine theta dx is now basically um, 
uh, sine theta d theta, so minus sine that, right? So then that becomes minus or plus, right? Uh, integral of x squared dx, right? Which is just equal to, okay, one half m r squared times this one right here is just going to be uh, 1 minus a minus is plus uh, so so this so cosine of, of pi is minus 1 times minus 1 is 1 minus a minus now is going to be a, uh, a 1 again right uh, and then plus now this is going to be this is one third cosine cube theta evaluated between zero and pi, right? Um, let me just make sure I get that right. Yes, I got that right. Okay, perfect. Okay, and so cosine cube of pi is actually minus one. So this will actually split the sign here, basically. So it's just going to be equal to 1 half mr squared. This is a 2 minus a 2 thirds, which is equal to, this is going to be 4 thirds. So um, 2 minus 2 thirds, 4 thirds times 1 half is 2 thirds. 2 thirds mr squared. Okay, a little tricky but can be done, right? Okay. So finally, let's basically look at a solid sphere, right? So in this case, it's just really tricky, right? Because now you have to basically do a bunch of these spheres, R, or if the capital R has low mass M. So I is equal to R, let's write this as A squared dm, which is now, is basically for each solid sphere, I have an R squared sine squared theta, okay? And then I have a density, which is rho, rho is mass over volume again, okay? And then for each one, I have basically the same thing here, r squared sine theta d theta d phi, and now one more dr, okay? So let's just do each one of these things. I'll move this thing over here. This will go from 0 to pi, this will go from 0 to 2 pi, and this will go from 0 to r, okay? Now, I have to keep everything else in mind here. Okay, so let's just do this. So this is going to be equal to, uh, let's see, so that's 1, 2. So that's going to be integral of r to the 4th dr, 0 to r. Okay? Second one is going to be a sine squared theta, sine theta, d theta. This is 0 to pi. Third one is going to be integral of basically 0 to 2 pi of d phi. And the fourth one is rho, which is mass over the volume. And volume for a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. Okay? All right. So we just did this one. That was this term right here. This is 2 minus 2 thirds. So this term right here is 4 thirds. This term right here is relatively simple. We just figured that out. That's just 2 pi. Okay? And this one right here is just basically capital R to the fifth over 5. Right? So we're going to just mix and match everything together. Let's do that. So 1 fifth R to the 5. 4 thirds, 2 pi, 
m over 4 thirds pi r cubed. Okay, so let's go kill things now. This kills this off. That kills that off. Uh, this kills that off. And then we're done. 2 fifths m r squared. And that is the answer right there. All right. That was a little rough, but so it goes, right? So last thing, um, well, there's a few other things I want to discuss now, right? So one interesting thing which we can do is something called the parallel axis theorem. Right? Basically says that if you have an object here and there's a center of mass, and you go spin it around a different axis, which is some distance h away, then the moment of inertia of this object is equal to the mass times basically h squared plus i center of mass, right? So as if you were spinning it through the center of mass, right? So to show this, recall i is equal to integral of r squared dm, actually, actually ra, right, but whatever, okay? So, <coughs> so what is that really? So this is really going to be, um, uh, I is equal to, okay, so this is the distance, right? So the integral of, let's see, so this new distance is going to be um, R A minus R C M A plus R C M A entire thing squared, right? So this is plus or minus on both sides, right? So it's not really hard, okay? Okay, so now, <coughs> you can define this, this, well, so then this thing becomes then write this thing out now. So this becomes R C M squared plus two R A minus R C M A dotted with R C M A plus R A minus R C M A squared. So this first term right here, that's just I of CM, all right? Now, <coughs> this second term right here, right? This is just basically the distance relative to RCM, right? So when you integrate over this thing, right? This will effectively give you a zero, right? So the zero plus this one is really just the distance h, right? Uh, once you integrate over dm. So it's going to be basically h squared times m, right? Because you integrate over all of m, right? And so this basically gives you the same as before icm plus mh squared, okay? All right, so let's just check this. So let's just spin rod at and so we just looked at this in the very very beginning right so spinning a rod at the end is um one third sorry one third ml squared spinning rod in the center is one half ml squared right 
So I at the end is equal to ICM plus the mass of the rod times basically what's the distance to the to the end? That's L over two squared. Okay, so this was one twelve ML squared plus M L squared over four, right? So this is going to be 4 over 12 ml squared, which is 1 third ml squared, which is exactly what we got earlier. Sorry, right here. Okay. Okay, so that checks it out. All right. Okay, so you could do a few things. All right, let's try a different example. You could have, let's say, a sphere on a rod, a solid sphere on a rod, okay? Let's imagine this distance here is 2R. This is R here, spinning around this thing. So I is equal to ICM plus MH squared. That's going to be two fish, looks this up, M r squared, which it computed this thing out, plus m times 2 r squared. So that's basically 4 m r squared plus 2 fifths m r squared. So that, if you do that out, uh, this is 20 over 5, 22 over 5 m r squared. Okay. Alrighty, so that's very nice. Okay. Um, okay, so so finally, we can now use the conservation of energy. Uh, we're kind of skipping the middle thing, which we talked about Newton's laws. We'll get to that in a second, right? Um, so let's imagine have a disk, solid disk, with some distance, with some radius r and total mass m1, and I'm gonna hang something from here. This is m2, and this object's gonna fall, right? And this thing's gonna start to spin up, right? So in this case, the mechanical energy is equal to the kinetic energy plus the potential energy, right? And so the kinetic energy is two parts. It's one half I omega squared plus one half M2 V2 squared plus the potential energy, which is M2 G times Y, all right? Okay, so let's go set this thing up. This is Y equals zero. Let's follow this distance a distance d, y equals minus d, all right? Okay, and then we'll ask the how rapidly this thing rotates. Okay, so, so the mechanical energy initially is equal to one half i omega squared plus one half m two v two squared plus m g y. Okay, now initially everything is not spinning omega zero. V equals zero, right? So this is zero plus zero, and because I, I um, judiciously chose this to be zero, zero again, that's zero, okay? Let's look at the final part. So E mechanical, final is equal to one half I omega F squared plus one half M two B two F squared plus M G Y. Let's say call it two for instance, right? Now, in order to make this thing work, I have to know something about what this thing and this thing is doing, right? So the tangential velocity at this point, V tangent is just R times omega. And so this rate of falling here, V2F is also R times omega F. So it's gonna be one half, this is a solid disk, one half, m1 r squared times omega f squared plus one half m2 
this becomes r squared omega f squared plus m2 g y2 right so let's just uh plug everything in this is one quarter m1 r squared omega f squared plus one half m2 r squared omega f squared plus m2 g minus d equals zero conservation energy after all right and so you can sort of solve this thing right here okay uh omega r omega is equal to let's see it's m g d divided by one quarter m1 plus one half m2 square root of this entire thing all righty now um we can i think i might skip the rest of it um because uh, the other one is just a slightly more complicated example of the same one